Namaste, welcome to Sugarcane AI's learning series. In these videos, we'll learn about generative AI in a very simple language and how AI can help you to perform better. My name is Nikhilesh and I'm a founder of a company called AI ML etc. Basically, we teach artificial intelligence and large language models in a very simple language. So in this video, let's talk about generative AI. So you can see these people don't exist. These images are generated by an AI model and we call these models generative AI models. So if we want to define generative AI, a very simple definition would be that those AI models that can generate. Now what all things AI models can generate? Right? So AI it's not that AI models can generate anything. Currently, AI models can generate images, they can generate videos, they can generate text, right? Uh, Chat GPT generates text. AI models can generate voice. Basically, they can it can also synthesize voice. AI models can generate code and 3D videos. Now, if we if we compare the scenario that was there before generative AI and which is there after generative AI. So before generative AI, if we want model to predict whether the image is of a cat or not, in order to do so, we had to train the model with thousands of cat images and thousands of non-cat images. Based on those images, models basically identify a pattern and then they start classifying the image, whether it's of a cat or not. But after generative AI, AI models can actually generate images of a cat or if you, if you feed lots of information about cat, they can also provide the information that what's a cat. So before that, they were just doing a very basic exercise. Before, before generative AI, they were doing a very basic exercise of whether this image is of cat or not. After generative AI, they can generate AI, they can generate cat or they can also tell what's a cat or they can also tell you lots of information about cat. So we all know that ML is part of artificial intelligence. Deep learning is part of machine learning and generative AI is part of deep learning. Now in generative AI, two AI models work in tandem. In traditional AI, you have one AI model that actually does the task. But in generative AI models, there are two models. There are two models and in complex when we combine these two models, this is known as generative adversarial networks. Okay, let's try to draw an analogy first to understand this. So let's consider a scenario where a thief is being trained by a policeman. So the job of a thief is to basically steal and job of a policeman is to basically catch that thief. But here, the job of a policeman is not just to catch the thief, but also to provide him with the feedback that why actually he got caught. So next time, thief has to make a better attempt and policeman again have, has to catch him and provide him with the feedback. So this scenario will go on until policeman no longer able to catch the thief. Now here, the same, same logic applies. We have two models. One is generator, which actually generates the fake image, right? And then we have another model, which is discriminator, which actually classifies whether this image is fake or real. If it's fake image, generator will again try to generate that image and discriminator will again classify it. 
एंड अंटिल दैट पॉइंट वेयर डिस्क्रिमिनेटर नो लॉन्गर एबल टू क्लासीफाई दैट फेक इमेज एज फेक सो इन एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वी एक्चुअली गेट a fake image which actually looks real and this is where this is how gener generative adversarial networks create fake images but they actually look real to us so you can see gans you have a generator which actually generates the image and classifier actually discriminates the image whether it's a piece of a cat dog or not so let's understand the intuition behind gans so you have generator you pass a noise vector to the generator and based on this noise vector it actually generates an image now when you uh, you pass that image to a discriminator and discriminator then classifies whether this image is fake or real and it also gives you the probability of like how much fake it is so here it's 85% fake so with discriminator discriminator is a classifier it actually learns the probability of class y real or fake given features x and the probabilities are actually the feedback for the generator now if you if generate if discriminator doesn't provide the feedback as in the probability there is no way for generator to improve so if you if if discriminator just says that it's a it's a fake or it's real generator will not able to understand how much fake it is or how much better attempt it has to make now so this probability is very important now let's understand how gans have evolved over the time so if you can see in 2014 right in 2014 if you can see gans could able to generate a black and white and a very blurred image of a face and within like 4.5 years in around 2018 they could able to generate a colored and a very realistic image now the other part of generative ai is your foundational uh, language models right which is your chat gpt the the model is Uh, GPT three. It was trained on chatting data, and then it became GPT three point five, and which which is more popularly known as Chat GPT. So you have these foundational models, right? So basically, what you do, you train these foundational models on lots of data. The data could be text, image, speech, and stru structured data or three D signals. And by training the models on this data. they can perform a variety of task like they can do they can do question answering they can basically do sentiment analysis they can do information extraction image captioning and so on you know the task which generative ai or these foundational models can do sentiment analysis is basically you give a text to a model and it will tell you whether this text is of positive sentiment or of negative sentiment right use case could be that you know you can uh, um, if if like if any e-commerce portal like amazon they want to understand whether the review is 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 of positive sentiment or of negative sentiment or basically a political party wants to understand whether people are tweeting positively or negatively about about their campaign or similarly brands want to understand how people are you know posting uh, about about their 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 products now let's understand the complete use cases of generative ai so what all things generative ai can do so it can generate text now how you can use this text you can use it for your marketing basically you it can help it can act as your content which you can post on your website and it can help you in your marketing it can help you in writing email 
it can help you in providing support you have chatbots which can provide uh, support to your users or your customers it can help you in general writing it can help you in summarization and other tasks now the as a developer it can help you in writing code so basically it can generate code but more than generating code it can also write documentation for that code it can also convert text into sql and it can also help in building websites it can generate image so what you can do you can generate image for your social media it can help you in generating image for your advertising ads which you, which you can run on your facebook on instagram it can also help you with your design it can help you in synthesizing your voice so basically you now and now you can also clone your voice it can help you in video editing it can help you with 3d model generation and other tasks where generative ai can help you is with ro robotic process automation it can generate music audio and stuff like these now here are some generative ai tools that can be helpful to you you can explore these tools and can use them for various tasks right you can have a look at these tools so you can have a look at these tools so that's it thanks for watching the video guys and uh, we'll be releasing more videos on generative ai daily so please make sure to watch these videos and learn about generative ai and how ai can help you perform better thanks